Hello, I'm Callistus. I'm a technology coach. And thank you for tuning into my channel. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to start your correct draw graphic design journey. Uh, if you are an absolute beginner, you've not done anything on Corey Draw before, if you follow through on this lesson, which is going to be you this, knowing how to design this GT Bank logo, I can assure you in no time you become a very good user of the Corey Draw graphic application software now in this lesson one you're going to be making this after that we we'll go to lesson two in another tutorial video um lesson theory four so on so far you can see and then later when we're done with the lesson six which is this Zene bank logo i'll graduate you to the level two lesson one and so on then after you can enter, start doing the big, big things that we do on Corel Draw. So without wasting much time, let's dive right into the tutorial. So when you first launch your tutorial of Corel Draw application, you are going to be greeted with a similar screen such as this. I'm actually using Corel Draw 2020. Uh, if you are using an older version or the latest, you will still be able to follow through on this tutorial. So the next thing you need to do now is to start a new document. Two ways to start a new document. You can click this box with this plus sign at the middle right here and it will give you something like this. Or you can use the more traditional method of clicking on file, then you see new. And did you notice it also has a shortcut? The control N. You click, if you type control N on your keyboard, it will also have the same uh, option. Now let's try and see. Okay now you have to name your document as usual what are we going to be doing again okay i remember gt bank logo so my favorite bank yeah so we've got in that so the next thing will now be for you to know about this primary color mode since you are in lesson one it's good you know about it right here now now you have two options the rgb color mode and the cny key now what are the differences when do you use these two if you are going to be designing on color draw even photoshop anything you are designing and what you are designing is going to be viewed from a screen only for screen purpose you are designing for then you use the rogb mode but if you are going to design for prints you know at the end your design is not going to end up on being viewed from the screen you're actually going to print it out maybe on paper on the flags you have to use the cnyk color mode then on the dimensions you can use any one that fits but for now we we'll only use the a4 which is very popular and uh, the width or the meter dimension the si units or, or the units uh, we use the inches but for bigger work you can use the feet or we'll be using the inches here uh, then for the orientation, mm, I would like to use the landscape, yeah, portrait, landscape. Then for the resolution, yeah, 300 dpi dot per inch, 
is quite okay. Uh, even if you put it, put it at 72, it's still okay. So I'll hit okay. Yeah, this is our drawing area. Our, uh, we have a lot of uh, tools here. You can see the uh, menu bar, the standard bar, so on and so forth. Yeah. Then you have your toolbox over here. I don't know why to wish the time start telling you, yeah, this is what this one does. You see, is the pick tool. I take my uh, cursor close to it. The tool tip will tell me the name of the tool I'm about to select. And when I select it, my cursor will change to resemble the tool that I've activated. Like if I choose this shape tool now to change to something like this, crop tool, see? You already, cause all this kind of tell you, I'll uh, give you an idea of what tool you have selected. Let me use this zoom now, if you can see. Just like that. Yeah. So in computing, you can also learn about what you are learning through this maze. You take your course of close to an item on your screen and the tool tip pops out and tells you the name of the object you are clicking on. It, it could be a tool, it could be any other thing. Then you also know what it can be useful. So you can learn that way. All right. Um, now, what are we going to design again? Yeah, GT Bank logo. So let's import it. To import, you can right click outside this drawing area, this printable area. You right click on it and you see the import. Again, there is a shortcut here, Control I. I've done the same for you. Then to now take it to where what you want to import is yeah we're importing the gt bank logo so i'll click on it and i'll put it yeah this is quite big so i'll need to resize it so when i'm going to resize i'll resize from the corners the corners not the sides see when i resize from here the, my resizing will be uniform. It's, not, it's like I'm resizing both the y axis and the x axis at the same time. Uh, let me quickly duplicate this one and I'll, I'll show you the effect of non resizing from the corner. I'm not saying you should never, in some cases, might want, want you resizing from this side or that at the corners, but best practices are. Uh, you resize from the corners to apply your resizing uniformly. So Ctrl D will help me to duplicate. Yeah, Ctrl D, you see, and I have to just click on your type Ctrl D on your keyboard, then that duplicates for you. So I'm going to show you what would the effect be when I'm trying to resize from the side rather than the corners. So what do I have, you see? Does it look good? No, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. So I hit my delete button and delete this one so that we can continue from with our work. So I'll hit, I'll click on the zoom to page height now so that my screen, my drawing will become visible again, see? Something like this. I still need some resizing I think we are good to go now yeah so I will now hit a click on my rectangle tool I will double click on it uh, fast double clicking and it looks as if a sheet of paper has been spread around on my drawing covers so it's always good if you do this so that you are kind of you already place a layer it's like actually what it means spread a sheet of paper that you can draw so the next thing is for me to now draw this rectangle 
Uh, it's a right angle even though it looks like a square for now. But if I want it to be a perfect square, I have to hold my control key down. If I have something like this now, now obviously it's a right angle. But by the time I hold the control key down, it becomes a perfect square. So I'll release my left click. Uh, I already have this. All right. Now I'll press P to ensure that my work is perfectly central, centralized and is in the center of the page. So I have this. Thank you. Then the next thing I'm going to draw now is this little box here. Uh, now that my cursor indicates that the right out go to is deactivated, I don't need to go back and start clicking. Okay, so I'll quickly just draw it again. I want it to be perfect square. Perfect square, I think this one is just okay. Yeah. Perfect square holding my control key down. Then I'll now use my arrow keys on my keyboard or what you call the navigation key to try and move it around. No, yeah, try and move it around to get what I want. Yep, yeah, there. Can this? just fine yeah okay now that we have this hmm. uh, i'm going to start applying colors orange color all right yeah i'll click on the bigger boss and click on orange it's as simple as that yeah we have that then this one here is going to take the white color there we go. Yeah, we have this too. So, now that we have this, there is something I just want to show you now. There is this black band or outline that is surrounding this box and even this internal one. It kind of makes your work ugly. So you just need to get rid of it. Now, something you need to know about getting rid of all this outline on that. Now take this uh, right box as a bucket. Think, uh, think of it as a bucket. That the black outline is outside of the bucket and it's painted black. But inside of the bucket it's painted white. Yes, the black outline which is outside of the bucket or box now if you want to remove the black outline you have to use the right click it's connected to the right click whereas the inside is connected to the left click so on selecting this box now this white box with the black outline and i want to get rid of this black outline I will take my cursor to this area here. This is my color palette and right click. You see, it gets rid of the black outline. Then over here, I'll do the same. I'm clicking on this bigger one. Now. By the way, I'm zooming in and out using my left my my scroll button using my scroll button and my holding my mouse mm -hmm. I'm using my scroll button if you are using a good mouse you can zoom in and out as you're touching the wheel your scroll button on your mouse so now that I've selected the big circle and the big um, square I'm going to right click again to get rid of it the outline see we have that now quickly to centralize my work I'll click on the what do you call it again zoom to page height so I'm not going to group you see 
we have the two objects here object one and object two we need them to become one object how do we achieve that by grouping them then before you can group them you need to select them you need to select them two ways to select you can be clicking the objects one after the other and be adding selections to it let's say i want to select this two now one method i can use i'll first of all click this small box and i'll hold my shift down and click the bigger box so both now have been selected so if i want to group them i can type uh, type uh, ctrl g together then i'll group them all i right click and i will click on group i'll achieve that the another way to select is you drag your cursor across what you want to select just like this see you can see some this line across it so when i release my mouse my left click selected so from there i can right click and click on group so we now have a grouped object that behaves like one you can also have a group you can use it on group ctrl u or on group or that will help you on group that okay now we want to add the tests yeah you click on the test tool and just click somewhere here then quickly you type g t b a n k j t bank yeah i'll go and pick my pick two now remember to resize from the corners then click on both to put in it yeah we'll try to align it may not be perfectly aligned then white i'll click on white yeah uh, so to be sure that you are try you are actually making it perfect yeah, let me uh, the gt bank test is already selected so hold your shift down and click the box now you've selected both just type c on your keyboard press the letter c on your keyboard that way centralize it so you can also use ctrl g now to group it so it becomes one object they are grouped together now so i press b back and centralize so i delete this one so this is how you design a gt the gt bank logo it's quite easy the first lesson the things you've learned so far at least you know how to create boxes you know how to remove the black outline with something that you know you have know how to create tests you know how to outline and you know remember the p when you have something like this and you want to centralize it to the middle of the page so this is the first lesson and it will show you to the next lesson which is the lesson two of stellum bank you'll be learning this one next it's kind of uh, the same is uh, you'll be learning it it's quite easy so see you in the next tutorial thank you for watching